Well, soon the Beecher Terrace complex in the Russell neighborhood will be no more. The bulldozers already bringing down part of the units, which were built back in 1939. There's some of the new look there and the old look. Beecher Terrace opened to residents in 1941. Now a new community is going up in its place. Not only apartments, but also businesses, a park, and a community center. It's projected to be finished by September of 2023. Beecher Terrace may at the end of its rope, but it is uh, rich with history, and its history shows it was a place where everyone was family. Crime was not a problem. The long life of Beecher Terrace and those who lived there through the generations is the subject of a special event next Tuesday night, documented by filmmaker Lavelle White. And you've also found some amazing historic photos we're going to show our uh, audience here today, but you really are diving into the generations, the families, and they tell you great stories. Yeah, they tell me great stories about growing up, what it was like living in Beecher Terrace in the Russell neighborhood. It was rich with history and pride. People was close and connected. They loved their neighbors and stuff. And they didn't see Beecher Terrace as a place of violence. They saw it as a place of hope and community. They knew it was different from Shepherd Square and Clarksdale's and Park, uh, Parkway places because of the proximity downtown. It showed a whole bunch of friendships and camaraderie. People come from 1930s all the way up until 2018, people have been living there for a long time and they moved on to do great things across the city and across the nation. So there was a shift at some point in that where the history, because as, as we know of more recent dates, it's more known with crime and things like that. When did that shift happen? I, I say the early, um, late 80s, early 90s, the thing society had shifted, um, societal issues had caused the, the decay in the environments like Beecher Terrace because of the crack epidemic and then loss of uh, employment and housing and uh, financial stability. Let's talk about its history. What did you find, Lavelle, about why it was built in the first place? Why it was selected on that part of the city? It opened in 1941. Yeah, it was uh, opened in 1941, constructed in 1939. It was in the Russell neighborhood. The old Walnut Street District was a vibrant, thriving community where businesses, black doctors came from Canada. The uh, Corn Alley Island Archaeology is doing a dig right now and finding all kind of uh, things in the per diem that they have in the community. They found in like art vases and jewelry. They had doctors and um, folks who were building up the community in the city of Louisville. They were international as well. What is the mood with that? I, I mean, so there's some mixed feelings with it coming down because you kind of mourn for the loss of what was there. Yes, I uh, mourn for the loss, but the people uh, tell them about those experiences, the growing pains, the triumph that they had to grow through, the um, work and not knowing that they not didn't have a lot, but they had a, a little and they wanted to share with their friends and family. And the neighborhood, you were talking about uh, how groups of, of young people the same age were all there together and they bonded, they made lifelong friends, uh, just stepping right out the front door. Yeah, because like it was uh, over 745 families. There was over thousands of kids that was able to play with each other. They had the playgrounds. They was living close to each other. They played at the Baxter Community Center in Bassett Square Park. They played at the 10th Street for the 10th Street Cardinals and danced with the cheerleaders and danced on the step teams. And they played and went over to the Chestnut Street YMCA. And mixed use facility coming. It won't just be housing, but it will be business. But you feel like it, it may be a good thing with, with new businesses coming, but it won't have that same feel perhaps that you did back in the day? Well, um, with all mixed income housing changes uh, different, um, you see the facades change. We got to make sure the people inside brings that same spirit and pride for the community back to make it look like something. Uh, revitalize the old Walnut Street and give that history so that people could know what's going on in that community and remember it as you might because it doesn't look the same. Live and, up to what and was. We, and yeah. we lost Walnut Street to urban renewal. It was such a crime because near, only one building exists that's left, the old River City Bank from that day. Everything yes, else was ripped out, but it had a New Orleans feel according to its history and produced some great musicians who made uh, national acclaim. Yeah, Duke Ellington even played on, on uh, Walnut Street, I found out in research.
All right. Interesting. Thanks. Thank you. And yeah. a lot thanks more to come history. on this with your history lesson as well. We want to let people know. Visions of Beecher Terrace with LaBelle is going to be Tuesday, October the 9th from 530 to 730. It'll be held at Western Library, so pack it in. I think you'll enjoy this panel discussion with LaBelle and a host of others. Western Library 604 South 10th Street right here.